Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at Profile Manager and we're going to take a look at how do you manage users and groups on Profile Manager. Now as I've shown you before uh, in a previous screencast, we talked about how to set Profile Manager up, how to get this screen set up and running. We walked through all of the different settings. Uh, we also talked about some of the uh, basics of enrolling your Mac and iOS devices into Profile Manager so they can be managed. And we also covered uh, a little bit on how uh, to deal with some of the restrictions and things that you might want to set uh, on Profile Manager. So this week we're going to talk again, like I said, about now how do we set up profiles and how do we manage users and groups with the profiles that we want to set up. So to launch Profile Manager, uh, you can click this little link here to open it or go into a web browser and uh, type in the uh, address up here that it, where it says it's available. Now I've already uh, done that, so let me just pull up uh, a web, shot, uh, web screen here. Let me just pull up my website here. And uh, as you can see, I've got my users on the side and I've got my groups. And so I can manage both of these. So I can manage users individually by going through and setting up a, a profile uh, for uh, this particular user. Or I can manage uh, all of my users by putting them into groups. And so in terms of thinking about strategies, if you've got a group of users that will have similar settings, so for instance, if you're in a home environment and you have kids and you want all the kids to have the same settings, uh, you could use groups. That would be a good way to manage it instead of going into each kid individually. Uh, or if you're in a classroom situation, maybe at a school or something, and you want to manage all of the students with similar accounts, uh, it's a great idea to create a group for those students, put all of those students in that group, and then any changes you make to the group students, for instance, will be pushed out uh, to every Every computer that they'll have access to and so all the accounts will be changed so it does make it a little smoother uh, in order to uh, edit a profile uh, you just go to the general profile and you click on edit uh, basically what you click on here uh, to change the profile will be the same as what you see in groups so there's no difference in what you'll see in this profile versus what you see in groups but I just wanted to point out uh, where that's located so you can see it on the individual so what I'm going to do for the purposes of this screencast let me just go over to groups and we're just going to manage, let's say, kids. And so I'm going to pull up the kids profile here. And we're just going to click on Edit. Now, once it loads, this is a profile that you'll start to create uh, for the uh, group kids, right? So these are going to be the settings for kids. Now, each, um, each change that you make is called a payload. And that's just basically because that's something to be delivered uh, to the devices. And so just so you know what that, uh, what that language means. And so what I want to do is I want to walk you through some of these settings just so you have an idea of the kinds of things that you can set profiles for. Uh, now, we've got this broken up into OS X and iOS. So those are changes that would impact both. Uh, iOS itself and then OS X. And so the settings under OS X will only be uh, used for uh, a Mac. Uh, not an iOS device, obviously iOS for iOS devices. And then finally, uh, OS X and iOS changes in here will be pushed to both types of devices uh, for uh, that particular group or the users within that group, if that makes sense. So let's start with this. We have a, a general uh, profile. This is mandatory uh, because it's, it's the setting for how you want the different profiles distributed to the devices. And so you put your organization name and information in there. That should usually already be filled in based on what you put on your server. Uh, you can put a description of the purpose of this profile, which comes in handy if you have multiple profiles. You can document them this way. And then uh, security controls and uh, you know automatically remove the profile. So can, uh, can this profile be removed or not? And you can set that to never uh, on a particular date when it will expire. So if you want to give kind of a uh, temporary pass to people on your network and then have it expire, you can do that. Or after a certain period of time, have it expire. And so in this case, we're going to have it never expire. We're just going to leave that open. So that's one. Now, you'll notice all of these other profiles now are not configured. And so once we click on them, for instance, on passcode, we've got to click this configure to set them up. So I click on configure for passcode. And this allows you to set all of the different values that you want to make as requirements for people setting up their passwords. So if you don't want people setting up a four digit password or something very simple that can be broken very easily because you're concerned about security, uh, you can come in and set uh, all of the details. Uh, you can set how long you want the passcode to be. You can set the minimum number of complex characters like at signs and things like that. Uh, the minimum passcode age, so how long uh, the passcode will be uh, allowed to stay in effect before it'll have to be redone and changed so that you can have people reset their passcodes. Uh, you know, maximum auto lock, so how many minutes will it just lock on its own? Uh, how much How much of the history, so how many attempts can they take? 
Uh, what's the grace period for the lock? Do you want it to be locked immediately or after a minute? You know, that kind of thing. And then number of failed attempts before uh, you're going to lock the device and all the data on the device will be erased. So that's an extreme uh, circumstance, but that's one thing that you can do. So here you can set this payload up to make these passwords work. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just kind of go through and show all of them, and then we'll uh, get out of out of this without uh, saving them. So uh, next we've got mail, and so you can come in here and actually configure mail if you want to. You can set up all of your mail account information in here, and so once this profile is accepted by the device, it will actually have mail already configured on the device. Now, if you have mail already set up, uh, you know, on your machine, in the profiles for everyone, this profile will already be set up for you. Uh, but if you wanted to configure it manually, you could do it in here as well. Uh, there's also Exchange support uh, that's been added here uh, inside uh, Maverick server so that you can uh, configure access to an Exchange server and go through uh, all of the different settings for that, uh, including, you know, auth authentication credentials and all kinds of things to uh, get that up and running. Uh, you have your uh, open directory that you can set up where you can configure that. Uh, again, this comes. Uh, this is really more important when you've got uh, maybe more than one server, and one of them is a, um, you know, a, a directory server. And so you want to make sure that everybody is connecting to that directory server for their usernames and all their information. You would come in here and set that up. Uh, again, for home users, you probably don't need to even uh, worry about this, but just wanted to show you that it's there. Uh, you can set up your contacts here and your calendar, just like we set up before uh, as we looked at the uh, settings for everyone. Uh, you can set up your network if you want to, which uh, you know sort of includes uh, how you want them to interface with the network and what the SSID is and uh, what security type and password if you want to set that up. So you can have that pre-set up so everybody's already ready to log into your network. They don't have to do that manually. Uh, that's a nice profile to have set up. Uh, you've got VPN, which again uh, is set up in the profile for, uh, settings for everyone. You've got certificates. If you want to have uh, kind of advanced certificates that you would set up to have people authenticate, again, this is used more in business environments, so it wouldn't be uh, necessary for home users, but that's there as well in case you want to use it. Uh, we've also got, you know, right below that, you've got a simple uh, certificate enrollment proto uh, protocol. So if you've actually got a server that runs SCEP, uh, you can set the settings up for that here. Uh, again, home users, you're probably not going to have that, but uh, it's nice to know if you've got a business and you're running that. Uh, you can set up web clips if you want to uh, by coming in here and actually uh, setting up URLs and web clips that will actually uh, show up. Um, you know, as, a, um, as an icon on your iOS devices and, and things like that so that people can just click an icon and get right to a website. And again, if you're in a business environment, you might want it to be your homepage where people can get to that right away. Or if you've got online manuals and things like that, this would be a, a simple way that you could configure those to look like applications, but they would just kind of launch into um, the actual page that you want your users to view. Uh, another addition here in Mavericks is fonts that you can actually uh, load uh, fonts that you want to have uh, included on the device so that if you've got uh, particular fonts that you use for your business and you, everybody really needs to have those, you can actually upload uh, your font palette right here and it will automatically be pushed and installed on uh, all of your client machines. So that's a, that is a nice uh, addition. And then you've got security and privacy, uh, again, and this goes across iOS and Macs, uh, that uh, you, you can say you don't want the users to uh, override Gatekeeper, which basically uh, only allows them to install uh, Apple-approved uh, types of applications. You don't want them to change the setting on that. Uh, you, can say, you can say whether or not you want to allow them to change the password, to require one when the screensaver happens. Uh, again, you've got a lot of different, this is all on OS X only, but you've got a lot of different things that you can set up, whether you want the diagnostic stuff sent to Apple or not. Uh, so again, it uh, gives you some nice things you can set up there. Uh, on the side of iOS, again, we walk through this. You've got restrictions that you can set up, and so here's where you can manage uh, kind of the parental control, so to speak, uh, on an iOS device, on everything that you want to allow or not allow. So anything that is not checked is not allowed, um, all the way down to, you know, just little details, or whether to show the notification center in the lock screen. I mean, you can uh, really fine-tune uh, your devices so that they only show what you want them to show. Uh, same thing with apps. You can uh, allow or not allow YouTube, uh, the iTunes Store, Game Center, uh, all of those things you can go ahead and set in here, and those get pushed to your devices. And then finally, media content. So you can set all of your ratings here, whether you want to allow, you know, if I got kids, you know, I, I don't want to allow this. You know, I've got kids that are uh, 13, so I'll say maybe PG-13 uh, movies are okay. Uh, with TV shows, uh, I only want them to see, let's say, PG, uh, PG TV shows. 
And in terms of apps, I want to only allow, let's say, 12 plus, not 17 plus. And so I can limit all of that. And when I push these settings, it will go to their device and it will limit what they can see uh, on their iOS devices. Uh, so again, this is a, a really nice way to be able to control this, have it pushed to the devices so you don't forget, uh, but yet this payload will be delivered and it'll restrict the device how you want to. And like I said, especially since I'm doing it for kids, uh, that's a great way to set it up. Uh, again, you can have a global HTTP proxy if you've got a proxy server that you want to run traffic through. Again, as a home user, you probably won't use that too much at all. Uh, you've got web content filters, and this is a, a new one uh, that's added in here as well, uh, where you can say uh, what type of uh, websites uh, are allowed or not, whether you want to limit adult content or you want to say, hey, only allow these websites, no other websites, or make sure these, web, these URLs can't be used. So you can fine-tune the web experience, again, on Safari as well, uh, which, again, if you're using it for kids or even in a workplace, uh, it's, it's a great relief to know that that's here to set up. Uh, another addition is single sign-on, and uh, really with single sign-on, uh, what that allows you to do is to sign on once uh, on your device using your, uh, your directory uh, login, and then all of the other services are accessible as well, so you don't have to keep logging in for each service like mail or calendar and those sorts of things. Now, on OS X server, if you're using open directory, that's already set up, and it uses uh, Kerberos to do the authentication. If you are using uh, an active directory or something with uh, a Windows server, let's say, uh, and you want to have single sign-on, then you'll want to make sure that you, um, you know, Kerberize uh, your setup first so that, that it'll allow that uh, Active Directory connection. And so this is where you would come in and configure that right here. Again, uh, for most home users that are just using OS X server, you don't have to worry about that. You can set up uh, and configure AirPlay. So if you've got multiple AirPlay devices, you can actually add those devices in here and say these are the ones that I want uh, you to have access to right away with AirPlay. And you can even restrict AirPlay destinations if you want to. Uh, this really comes in handy if you're in a business environment with you know just a ton of uh, AirPlay devices. Uh, you can limit them by uh, user groups so that they don't have too many showing up uh, on their device. So that's, that's why that's there. Uh, AirPrint. You can also set up your AirPrint printer configure the settings. You just got to put in the IP address and the resource path to the printer, and those printers will automatically be configured for AirPrint uh, on your iOS devices. Uh, you can uh, subscribe to calendars on here and put in the calendar subscription URL. Uh, you've got, again, uh, APN, which is your access point name uh, settings. Again, this is more if you actually use an access point. Uh, as home users, you probably don't, so uh, this wouldn't be as important to you. Uh, finally, down here, we can manage uh, OS X settings. You can manage the uh, identification uh, of your user, kind of what the user display name uh, for accounts would be, the email, all those kinds of things can be in here. Uh, I probably wouldn't use this as much for groups as individual users, uh, but it is available uh, if you wanted it to be by group. Uh, you've got restrictions on OS X as well, and so in here you can restrict just about anything. You can see, say what things you want to show in preferences. And what's really nice is it does add the third-party apps that you have installed on here as well. So you can show or choose to show or not show those things on their devices, uh, which is a nice add. Uh, apps, you can choose what type of apps you want uh, to be shown or not and uh, what folders to be shown. Uh, widgets, you can do the same thing with different dashboard widgets, which ones to run. Uh, with media, uh, what access they have to different media in terms of uh, disk drives and what they can eject and use. Uh, sharing, uh, you can set up what shows up in the sharing menu uh, of OS X, uh, what types of things you want or don't want. You just uncheck the things you don't want. Uh, so that works out really nice. And you can even automatically uh, enable new sharing services if you wanted to. And then on the desktop, you can lock the desktop picture if you want. So again, in a work environment, you're a little concerned on what shows up with a desktop picture. Then you might want to lock it to something that you don't have to worry about. And everybody has the same desktop picture if you want it uniform. Uh, you can configure messages, uh, as we've talked about earlier. That's on the settings for everyone. Uh, an AD, Active Directory Certificate, if you're using a Windows environment. Uh, you can even configure login items uh, in here. Uh, so again, what apps will actually uh, uh, be hidden uh, or will launch at login, uh, different items that will um, be open at login. Uh, uh, network mounts and uh, you know those kinds of things. So as I showed you before, I showed you how to do uh, an auto mount in this series. Uh, you can also set up what network drives uh, or folders you want to mount right here as soon as users log in. And so you can actually set a payload for that and it'll push those settings to the device. So this is another place you can do that. Uh, you've got mobility settings uh, for uh, portable home directories, which I'm going to do a specific screencast on, so I'll show you that later. Uh, you can customize the dock. 
on here and uh, set the dock size and all of the different um, settings that you would normally do inside the uh, Apple menu uh, for the dock. All of those are in here, so you can set those ahead of time. Uh, you can set up your printers uh, for sure uh, on your system again, and this is for OS X. Uh, parental controls uh, are in here, and so again, what's really nice, I can go in there and uh, you know hide profanity. Uh, I can limit access to certain websites if I want to. I can allow URLs or deny them. Uh, I can even set time limits uh, for how long uh, you know each user can be on the computer, how many hours, and even a curfew uh, where I can do it by time. So what's nice is I can set this once, push it all to my to all my kids' devices, whether they're iOS or OS 10 devices, and they'll take effect and uh, be able to be used. I don't have to go to each device and have to set those up. Uh, again, in the Finder, we can configure a few things in the Finder. Again, the things that we want to show on the desktop or not. Uh, and then we've got different commands that we can have in the Go menu and things that they can do, whether they can restart the computer or not. Maybe you don't want your kids to shut the computer down, so you can just remove this, and now they won't be able to shut the computer down. It won't even show up in the Apple menu uh, for that to happen. Uh, we have accessibility settings, so you can set those up, again, for seeing uh, hearing and then interacting and so you can set those those things in case you have someone who has accessibility issues and then there's even a place here for custom settings if you didn't find anything in all of those things we went over uh, you could even set up a few uh, custom settings if you want to again that's a little bit more of an advanced uh, setup so it's not something home users would worry about too much uh, but it is there if you wanted to extend this a little bit so that gives you an idea of all of the various settings that you can do, uh, again, using a profile push to your devices. This really is a very powerful way to manage your devices and a very efficient way to do it as well, uh, and something that, uh, that really makes server worth it. And so, uh, like I said, I would tend to manage by groups as much as you can, and then by users uh, if they don't fit neatly into any particular group. Now, you notice all of these payloads are configured, uh, but if I don't want to actually push those, I can just click Cancel, and all of those things will be put back uh, to where they were. And uh, if you see, if I uh, click on Edit again and open this, you'll notice that none of these are configured, so I can start all over. So let me just cancel that. So that gives you an idea of how to set up profiles and users and groups. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'll show you how to do the same thing for uh, devices and device groups, uh, just to give you an idea of how that works. And we'll show you how the different uh, profiles get pushed and how you know that they've made it to the different devices that you set up. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.